you need to know this. I'm going to explain you how to remove all the red flags your token could have and make people want to invest on it. For doing this video, I've just created this token you are seeing here, no rug, it's a token I created on Smithy Tools. Okay, here you can create a token if you don't know how to create it, here you have a tutorial on how to do it. But anyways, the most important is that if we copy the address of this token and we go to rook check, here you have, you can check which red flags does your token have. Okay, basically it shows us uh, the authorities we still have and the, dark, the danger things we can do with our token in order to rook people. Okay, so if you see here, uh, we can see that we have the mint authority enabled, we have the freeze authority enabled, uh, we have another risk which is top 10 holders high ownership, uh, we have single holder ownership, low liquidity, high ownership, and also low amount of liquidity pool providers and mutable metadata. Okay, so basically these are all the red flags or token could have just when we create it and let's remove all them step by step. Okay, the first one we have is the means authority is still enabled. Basically, on Solana, we have three different authorities on a token. It's not, la not, it's not like on Ethereum. We have three authorities, okay? Mint authority, freeze authority, and update authority, okay? The mint authority is the authority that allows us to mint more supply of an existing token, okay? For example, with this token I have created, I can go in here. You will have all links in the description, okay? And I would be able to select my token, no rug and mint more supply of the token, okay? If I put here all this, I can click on mint and I'll be minting more supply of the token. This means that in any moment I want, after launching my token, I can mint more supply and sell out them and rook all the investors I have in my token, okay? As you can see, if I confirm, I will make a greater supply. So basically, if we keep the mint authority, we would be able to do this on any moment we want and for sure this not doesn't make people feel secure so we need to revoke this authority okay we also have the freeze authority which is the authority that allow us to freeze the token on any other holder wallet okay so other people wouldn't be able to sell it that's why it's important and also it's mandatory if you want to create a liquidity pool so you will need to revoke the freeze authority if you want to create a liquidity pool and for sure it's a red flag for your token the third authority we have is the update authority. The update authority allows us to change, upload. <clears throat> the update authority allows us to make changes on the token metadata. Change the name, change the image, uh, change the description, and all these things. Uh, we call a token immutable when this authority is revoked. Okay? So these are the three authorities we have on Solana, and they are really important. Um, and we should revoke them in order to make people feel secure when investing, okay? Usually people check these things before investing. So for revoking these authorities, uh, you can go to a Smith Tools, okay? You will have the link in the description. And here you have the tools, okay? You can go here, revoke freeze authority. You select the token and you click on revoke. The cost of the tool is only 0.1 Solana, okay? You confirm the transaction and the authority is revoked. We can do the same with Mint Authority. We come here, we select the token, and we revoke Mint. Let's see. It opens the transaction, and we confirm. Another authority revoked. I click it two times, that's why, okay. And we can do the same with the token. We can make the token immutable, which would be revoke the update authority of our token, okay. We make the same, and we make the token immutable. We revoke the update authority. Now we revoke all these authorities, so we can't change the token metadata, we can't mint more supply of our token, and we can't freeze the token, okay? So if we update, now we should see that the token doesn't have the three red flags we had before, okay? We don't have the freeze and the mint authority now. It is still show mutable metadata because uh, the update authority takes a bit in order to load, okay? Now we have top 10 holders high ownership. This is obvious, okay? Because um, it's a red flag when a token have the best holders, the top holders with too much supply because any of them will sell and dump too much the price. So the thing here is that we need to distribute the token properly, okay? You should do your tokenomics. You may make an airdrop, you may add too much 
uh, supply of the token to the liquidity. You can make whatever you want, but it's important that your token is distributed, okay? Also, it's important the number of holders you have. So if you wanna make an airdrop, for example, it's really common that meme coins, in order to split the world, have more holders and all this, make an airdrop. You can also use a smithy tool for doing that, and you will be able to distribute easily uh, the token to different wallets. Usually people make an, a snapshot of any famous token or any famous NFT collection and then make the airdrop, okay? You can make also the snapshot in here. You have a tool for make the snapshot of any token of or any NFT holder and then you can make the airdrop to them, okay? So this would be about the token distribution. We have the same thing here, the single holder ownership. We shouldn't have only one wallet with a large amount of our token, so it's again about distribution and high ownership is kind of the same, okay? So now the other two left red flags we have are low liquidity and low amount of liquidity providers, okay? The low liquidity is basically the amount of liquidity we add to the liquidity pool, okay? Usually, uh, at least for a good meme coin project, if you want to reach a high market cap from 100,000 to 1 million so far, I would recommend you to add between two and five thousand dollars of liquidity okay uh, this depends on the moment this depends on the market but at least that quantity would be the best one in order to reach a good volume of your token and reach a, a good price and a good market cap okay and about the low amount of liquidity providers uh, this is basically that you can create more than a liquidity pool and you may have different wallets adding liquidity to your liquidity pool so uh, the more wallets provide liquidity to your liquidity pool the more secure the project is and the more powerful the project is okay so let's see how a rook check should show when we finish this of course i'm not going to explain you how to create a liquidity pool and how to do all this in this video you can check this video above in order to do that but uh, i'm going to show you that how should our token look like when we make it properly okay so here you we have a good example okay print they are partners of smithy and they have an amazing token okay they are one of the best tokens within solana as you can see they have risk, risk analysis good okay they don't have any red flags uh, you also can see here the supply the market cap the liquidity pool as you can see they have different liquidity pools and different amounts of liquidity also the liquidity is locked or it's burned, which is really important, okay? Once you create the liquidity pool, um, it will be another red flag if you don't burn that liquidity pool. So it's cool that you use Sol Incinerator uh, or any other platform in order to burn your liquidity, okay? When you create a liquidity pool, you will receive tokens, okay? Liquidity pool tokens. And in order to make people feel secure, you should burn those tokens. You can also lock them, but it's more usual in Solana to burn the liquidity pool tokens, okay? So that's all for today. Hope you like the video and hope it's useful for you in order to launch a successful project. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.